What's up guys, Rick here with my top five sleepers for this week's Masters. That's right, these are golfers a little bit further down the betting board or a little bit cheaper on your favorite daily fantasy site that I think might offer a bit of value. And I think they're just worth a second look. So hopefully I can identify some golfers that you might not have considered yet or if you have, provide an additional perspective on them. Plenty more content coming this week. Two live chats on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, the Rick Run Good uh, Masters live chat, questions and answers, ownership, whatever else you want to talk about. And then finally, the 8 15 p.m. Eastern time live chat. That's the Jock Market Power Hour on Wednesday evening to talk through Stock Market DFS. It's going to be great. But for now, let's jump into the sleepers. Let's start with Joaquin Neiman, who is 60 to 1 and $7,400 on DraftKings. And he got into my ether thanks to uh, a custom model that I ran on Monday's DFS show where he popped up as one of the top players. And I, and I really had to do a deep dive into this. So uh, the stats that we were looking for, the metrics that we were looking for at Augusta National include driving distance, birdie or better percentage, strokes gain total. Those were the top three. And Joaquin Neiman has has been phenomenal. If you look at his birdie average, he's seventh on tour in that category. You look at strokes gain total, he's 11th there. He's seventh off the tee. He's 14th from tee to green. I mean, he is just absolutely doing it in every category. But the real thing that stuck out to me that I don't think people have realized is that he's pretty long off the tee, averaging 312 yards with the driver. That is the ninth longest player on the PGA Tour. So when you put all of that together... Joaquin Neiman has certainly caught my attention for this week's Masters. I believe he will be more volatile uh, than other options because of his streakiness, his age, his lack of experience, especially at Augusta National. But man, he has the raw skill set and the raw talent to really put it together on any given week. And that week might be this week. Next up is Abraham Answer, who is 66 to 1 to win the Masters, and he's $7,400 on DraftKings. And Abraham Answer has been laying a foundation of what I call hashtag team no putt, right? Guys that uh, can get you to the green, but once they're on the green, it is a bit of a struggle. And honestly, that has not been the case for Abraham Answer during his career, but his last five or six events, he's really been striping the ball. He's been hitting his driver okay. His irons have been much better, and the putter has been horrific. And, and that is generally, believe it or not, a good sign. You know, I have a couple of videos uh, and one recently that I released called Why I'm on Team No Putt that kind of talks about the volatility of putting. And if that's the one area that you're struggling in, it's kind of okay because you can get hot for a day, you can get hot for four days, and you can turn that around and you can make a lot of noise. And it's nice to see that answer did indeed gain strokes putting in uh, uh, last week at the Valero Texas Open, so he has not completely lost the putter. It might be the springboard that he needs into the Masters and Augusta National this week. So uh, putting it all together, answer is laying the blueprint of being a guy who will pop off, catch a hot putter, and make a lot of noise. We're probably not going to know what week it's going to be, but I don't see him backing down from anyone on any course. He has proven that to us in his young career, and I think he can make plenty of noise at the Masters. Jason Kokrak is 80 to 1 and $6,900 on DraftKings. And I really like what Kokrak has been doing over the course of the past couple of weeks. Of course, he failed to get out of his group stage at the WGC Dell Technologies match play, but uh, so did everyone, right? I mean, one of the top seeds, only one, John Rahm, made it out of his own group. So I'm certainly not going to knock any player for failing to make it out of their match play group, especially uh, one for Kokrak, who wasn't even the top seed in his group. I'm looking back a little bit further. The, the three starts prior to the match play where Jason Kokrak has been unbelievable, consecutive, three in a row, top tens at the WGC Workday, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and the Players' Championship. Think about those courses. The Concession, Bay Hill, TPC Sawgrass. These are absolutely difficult golf courses with stacked fields, and it's Jason Kokrak on the first page of the leaderboard in each and every one of them. Now you look to the Masters where it's a smaller field. It is probably 
and almost certainly a weaker field, especially weaker than the Players' Championship. And Kokrak, uh, in difficult conditions, has thrived in the past couple of months. I think this sets up well for Jason Kokrak to get back on track and put himself in contention again. Can he win this golf tournament? That would be very unlikely. Can he finish inside the top 10? I think he absolutely can. And if he does that, he's certainly going to pay himself off for daily fantasy purposes. And you're going to get a pretty decent number on his top 10 or even his top 20 odds based on his outright. Phil Mickelson is 100 to 1 and $6,600 on DraftKings. I talked about him during the DFS preview show on Monday. And I got to tell you guys, for those of you who know, I'm not a Phil Mickelson guy. I don't really like the way he plays. I've been in almost a full fade of Phil Mickelson for 18 months, but I'm. I'm seeing something. You know, we we have to uh, give credit where credit is due. And now Mickelson has gained strokes on approach in four of his last five starts. I could not find another instance of that uh, since February of 2019. We're talking about over two years since he has been in the current form that he is with his approaches. And of course, it's the perfect timing because he's going to go to Augusta National where experience matters and nobody's got experience like Phil Mickelson, who will be making his 29th start at the Masters, which has resulted in 15 top 10s. And of course, the three championships on his resume. It's perfect timing. It's really great form. Phil Mickelson at 100 to 1 to make a lot of noise at Augusta National. Ryan Palmer is 150 to 1 to win the Masters. He's $6,500 on DraftKings. And let's be real, I don't think he's going to win this golf tournament. You know, it, every, everything would have to go right for Palmer to win, but he has been outperforming his expectations for over a year. And the courses that he's had success are some of the most difficult courses with some of the deepest fields in the game. I'm talking about his runner up finish at the Memorial, I'm talking about his T4 at the Zozo Championship and his fourth place finish at the tournament of champions and I'm talking about his runner-up finish at the Farmers Insurance Open. It's that great play that even got him in to this field and now he's getting hung with a, a long number by odds makers and a $6,500 price tag on DraftKings where, where Palmer has been routinely piling up double-digit returns in terms of value, 10 times value, 15 times value, whatever it takes. Palmer has been doing it. Uh, this is very clearly, uh, to me, one of the most most mispriced golfers in terms of DFS sites, so I'm sure he's going to miss the cut. But uh, the the point is well warranted that this guy has been valuable in every format, and now he's getting a super low price tag. Is he going to win? No. If he finishes anywhere inside the top 20, he probably pays himself off at this price tag, and maybe even in the top 30, depending on how many birdies that he makes. So plenty of upside in that price, and Palmer is going to be incredibly popular this week. There you go. Five guys that I'm hoping uh, I've offered a bit more perspective on or maybe guys that you had not considered, maybe ways to round out your lineup or to throw a couple of darts from the bottom of the betting board. Let me know who I left off this list, who you agreed with, and who you disagreed with. Tweet me at Rick Good or leave a comment below. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon.